Hello, Mr. Hill here. Um, we are going to have a look uh, today at uh, packaging and what makes effective packaging. So I've got a few examples here. Uh, we've got some all different types of ones, okay? Just dropped one. Okay, so what the learning question for today is what makes effective packaging? Now, this is such a broad area. We're just going to whiz through six um, key features of what makes effective packaging. You can see those on screen now, uh, but I'm going to show you some examples um, uh, as we go along. So let's start with the first one. Let's start with protect, okay? It's a given. All packaging must protect its contents, okay? It protects it from contamination by microorganisms, bugs, things like that. It also protects um, against air, moisture, and toxins that might want to get inside this. Now, I'm going to use this one as an example because this one's a really good um, example of this. So inside this packaging, we've got uh, these little vacuum sealed pots. Now, vacuum sealing is a really good way to seal a product and to make it airtight, okay? So one, we've got this, the contents of our packaging. We then, that is then packed inside the box, okay? Box lid closes, once that's all sealed, that, that uh, whatever's inside this box cannot move, okay? So it's nice and protected. So our next one, if I've got to transport this from another country to Britain, I am gonna worry that uh, this might get disrupted or damaged during transport. It also needs to be really easy. People carrying these or stacking these on delivery pallets need to do that in the easiest way and the most efficient way possible. Now, this being a uh, standardized shape, it's a nice cube, it's an equal sided cube, is easily stackable. So it's really easy to transport. Another key feature. Now, as mentioned before with the little tubs inside, this one, this packaging keeps all of the contents together, okay? Another good example of this is some breakfast bars, um, which is some of my favorite. And the breakfast bars, this box contains five breakfast bars and they sit in rows inside this box, okay? And the, I think it has five, four bars in and the size of the bars is ex exactly the same size as this box, meaning when it's full, if it all moves, they all stay together. So they fit the shape of the box. There's no rattling around. They don't move, they don't slip. It keeps all the products together, okay? I'm gonna stay on this one. This is a good one. When I'm looking at this box, okay, packaging, I need to understand as a consumer what is inside it. And there's multiple ways that packaging design can do this, but this has got two particular features that I wanna to talk to you about. One, we've got some uh, text and graphics on the front, okay? The graphics on the front often describe what's in the box, and that's really important. We've also got an image, um, an illustration or a digital graphic describing what the product looks like. So it's not just describing what it is, it's being a, it's allowing us to visualize what the product looks like. And there's one, um, another really interesting feature. This one here has a cutout hole in it, okay? So we've got the text that tells us what the product is, We've got an image to describe what the product looks like. And now we've got a cutout hole so we can um, we can find out what the product feels like. So is it foil wrapped inside there? Are the bars loose? That all is extra information that we get. It also lets you know the size of the bars. So identifying what's inside is super, super important. Now, similarly to when we're transporting products, they need to be stored correctly, okay? These ones, the two that I've shown you for examples, are both boxes. One's a rectangle, one's a cube, okay? And what we can do with both of these is we can stack them very, very neatly and easily. So if this um, was stacked on a pallet of lots of different products, you can store those safely and neatly in a stock room or on a supermarket shelf. So that's a key feature when you're having a think about designing your packaging. Does is it is it able to be stored efficiently? Okay, that's super important if you're going to start to sell your products. Now, 
On every single product, we've got some printed information. We said that the printed information helps you identify the product. It also helps you do lots of other things, okay? The printed information, you can see along the bottom here, we've got some icons, and those icons are generic icons that appear on all different types of products. And they feature like recycling, we've got some dietary and nutritional information there. But the one I want to talk to you about uh, today is famous barcode, okay? When I ask students um, what that barcode is for and what it does, the main thing I get, which you probably think, is it tells you the price when you scan it um, or the shop worker scans it for you. That's one reason, yes, but another reason is because that barcode contains lots and lots of information. And most of that information relates to some of the uh, keywords that we've already spoken about. So transport, once that barcode is scanned, probably not at the till point, it's probably during the delivery process, um, maybe a uh, computer in the stock room, um, so on and so forth. And that will tell us where the product's been, when it's arrived in the shop, what time it arrived, what day it arrived, the if it's been temperature controlled, uh, things like that. It also tells us where the product is stored in the shop. So in the stock room, if I go in and I fancy, oh, I want these for the next year of my life and I'm gonna buy everything that's on the shelf. When I scan each of those uh, 365 boxes of these, that's gonna tell the shop that they're running low on stock. And that's very, very important for things like um, if they need to reorder to keep the stock levels up so you don't go into a shop and they've ran out because that's no fun for anyone. So as soon as I scan one of these, it minuses one off in the stock room and lets them know that when they get to a particular level of stock that they need to reorder. Sometimes that happens automatically. Other times in some businesses, they need to press the button and say, we need to order more of those because Mr. Hill has bought the shop out, okay? So lots of information there. So let's just go over those again. What makes effective packaging? We've got protection, okay? We've got ease of transport. We've got keeping the product together inside. We've got being able to identify what's in, uh, inside the packaging. We've got storage. Remember we put them on top of each other. So ease of storage and we've got printed information. Those are your six key features. Now, if you're in year seven, eight or nine, these are really important features that you can use to describe why you've designed your packaging in designing technology in a certain way. They also go for any products you're making when you come to the development stage um, and you'll be able to consider some of these. Um, your teacher will be super impressed that you know them. So please take that information um, and take it back to your classroom. Super important. Now, I want you, after finishing this video, to go into your cupboards at home or your bedroom and I want you to pick um, a selection of little products that you've got that have some packaging. And I want you to start to identify on the packaging some of these key features or design elements you can even go for so you can identify the graphics and things, illustrations, logo, things like that. Um, and also leave your comments um, in the comments below to tell me what is good packaging. And I want you to have a look to see some really bad packaging. If you've got something where you look at it and you don't know what's inside, you think that all the contents is going to spill and it's going to ruin, it's not easily stored um, because it's a really, really difficult shape or the printed information on it is really unclear. Maybe you can't even see it. Maybe it's not even on there, okay? If you can identify some really bad packaging and non-effective packaging, make sure you pop it into the comments below and I'll be able to have a look at those uh, and maybe I'll do a video of the worst packaging designs um, you guys have suggested. That's it for now. Thank you for joining a little micro lesson there um, for design and technology product design. And hopefully we can see you, we'll see you next time when we've got one up. If you hit the subscribe button, you'll be notified when we've uploaded another video and you can come and watch that one as well. Thanks again for watching and I will see you soon. Bye bye.